Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Bayport United Methodist Church. Today, hear more about who we are and whose we are. It's our joy and privilege to be able to worship our God, not only in person, at the sanctuary, at the church, but where you are and wherever you are through Zoom and YouTube channel. Our church has our own YouTube channel. Please visit and subscribe it so you can watch the previous worship videos and other stuff later. And I have a few announcements. Um, please mark on your calendar and save the date for a service for Backpack Blessing on Sunday, September 12th. It's also the first day of Sunday school this year. All students, teachers, administrators, school staff are invited to worship for a special time of blessing and prayer. If you have any questions, please contact our Sunday school superintendents, Bridget and Karen. On this Wednesday, September 1st, at seven o'clock, the church council will gather on Zoom to review the current worship safety guidelines and to find out a way to move forward for our ministry and mission to the community. I ask you to pray for our leadership and for wisdom and direction. Is there any other announcements? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as Pastor just said, um, the church council will be meeting on September 1st. That was originally the date of the next worship committee meeting. We have moved that back one week. So worship will meet on Wednesday, September 8th um, at 7 p.m. in the, um, the virtual sanctuary by Zoom. And I'll send out an email reminder about that. Right, great. Any other announcements? Yes, please. Good morning. Good morning. And, and welcome to everyone uh, worshiping in person with us this morning. And welcome to the pajama people that are joining us on Zoom this morning. <laughs> right, right, I get it. I, I didn't originally have an announcement, but I just thought uh, in case you missed it, I would just let you know that our church softball team won the championship this year. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> And, and so it, was a, it was a surprise because we did not have a good season. We actually had a losing record, but when the playoffs came around, for some reason, it all clicked. So, are there any other announcements? If not, let's begin our worship. Would you please rise and join with me in the call to worship? Summer wanes and the autumn draws close. Lord, help us to be ready for opportunities of service. We have felt the refreshment of time away. Lord, give us spirits of joy for the times ahead. 
Come, let us celebrate God's eternal presence and love. Let us, let us open our spirits to receive God's direction for our lives. Amen. And please join with me in the opening prayer. Lord of mercy and abundant love, we have gathered here this day to hear your healing words of compassion and to be transformed by your love. Help us to become more faithful servants in our thoughts, words, and deeds. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now if you would please join in our opening hymn, Lord, I want to be a Christian. reading this morning is from the 15th Psalm. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill and speak from their heart? Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their Who wicked are those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt? who do not lend money at a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and I'm sorry, and if you would um, turn to your neighbor and your brothers and sisters and pass the peace of Christ to each other. Have you looked around 
Would you please rise as you are able for the gospel reading. Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, 14 and 15, and 21 through 23. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. See, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, they do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, 
teaching human precepts as doctrines, you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that all evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The Pharisees and teachers of the law have come with question. They ask Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with the defiled hands? Traditionally, when coming from the market, they would be expected to wash their hands, not just for hygiene, hygiene reasons, but, but a religious matter. They are required to purify before the table, which was the law. But re religious leaders are here to examine Jesus' operations and catch him in the act of inconsistency and violation of the law. This story of hand-washing issue reminds me of my ordinary life in my house. When I come home, end of the day, my three children get so excited, run to the door and greet me, Daddy, what a blessing. I'm thinking, oh, thank God, I'm so fortunate. I'm so blessed. But they suddenly stop and ask, Alexis usually started first. Daddy, wait, did you wash your hands? <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't touch me. <laughs> then I say, would you just give me a hug? No, <laughs> wash your hands, all three kids, yeah. I'm not saying that they do wrong, but I'm just saying that they didn't even give me a chance to go to the bathroom to wash my hands. They start first, and then they <laughs> ignore me. Anyway, I've never complained. I go and wash my hands because I just like hugging my kids. Today's text does not clearly say, nor does anyone ask why Jesus' disciples did not wash their hands. Nobody knows. It is also possible that the disciples did, did wash their hands before the Pharisees arrived. I don't know, probably. People come with judgment often from the outside looking in. That's the problem. Care has to be taken here. There's always a story behind the story. Today, Jesus deals directly with questions of what defiles people and religion. Faced with the tradition and its de demands, Jesus declares that Isaiah was right. In verse 6, quote, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. 
quote him. This notion of who is defiled and who is not is found in some of our current religious and political discussions and debates. Finger pointing about who is defiled, who is unclean, is commonplace even and especially in many religious systems, in churches as well. A couple of years ago, a young couple called me to counsel their marriage problems. I had known them pretty well since I, I baptized their child. First, the wife began telling me about her husband's problem and behavior. And then the husband did. Their voice got louder and louder, and they started to fight in front of me. So I said, excuse me. Seems to me like you both have problems. You keep complaining each other. You have no control over others' behavior this point. What you do have some control over is yourself. You can't change your spouse, but you can change your own attitude, your life. I think this is what Jesus is telling us today. Probably we are caught in situations that we can't change. But we have a better chance of changing ourselves than others. You may be unable to change your world, but with God's help, maybe your heart can change. In other words, if your heart cannot change, there's no change. Jesus points out that the evil we find in the world starts with us. If we are serious about transforming the world's evil, we need to begin personally in admission and confrontation with our own evil. We may have come here this morning hoping for a few uplifting ideas, an opportunity for us to consider some religious beliefs and practices. Then Jesus turns the discussion back on us, forcing us to look within, to examine ourselves, to open up our hearts for self-reflection this morning. From the scripture, we know that the more the Pharisees focused on outward actions, the less attention they gave to inner attitudes. They were going through the motions, but losing sight of their deeper motivations. They focused on the rules, but neglected a relationship with the living God our creator. They gave lip service, but did not give themselves in loving service. They washed their hands, but did not have a clean heart. So my sisters and brothers, Jesus does not condemn our outward acts of piety and religious devotion like going to church, listening to sermons, working in service to those in need. I'm, I'm not saying that those are not important. Those are very important. And yet, I think he says to us this day, today, that's not good enough. Look with it. Allow me to work in your life to bring you closer to me and my will for your life combine the eternal 
internal with the external. That's what Jesus told us to do. So friends, lastly, I'd like to invite you to read this prayer with me. So would you put the next slide? Yes, that's it. This is my favorite, favorite prayer from uh, theologian Reinhold Niebuhr. So would you pray with me as a closing prayer? Ready? God, give us grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Courage to change the things that should be changed and wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. So now, friends, please join me with communion prayer. So uh, could you bring me the clipboard? Let us pray. Oh God, gracious and loving, compassionate God, you want us to be people who care deeply about others and about the, this world like you did to us. Lord, I pray for those who are sick, suffering, lonely, misguided, or just in need of your presence. Lord, we ask that you would touch them with your healing, with your guidance, with your peace. We have those on our, our prayer list, but hear us now as people in this congregation lift the names of those for whom we ask your blessing in silence. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I lift up all children, students, school staff who start new beginnings this week. Allow them to experience your presence in the many blessings you put before them. Lord, open their eyes to the new challenges and exciting opportunities that this new school year brings. Open their hearts and minds to new friends, new teachers, new classrooms, new journey. Give them generous spirits to be enthusiastic with their studies and courage to accept new opportunities. Lord, help them fulfill their plans and goals. Especially keep them healthy and well. Wrap your arms around them. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer now we lift up the prayer requests from the clipboard donna asks for prayers for the rescue of all americans and allies in afghanistan and for the comfort for the families of the marines killed in afghanistan protection for those in the path of hurricane ida and healing for sadie following an emergency cesarean Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judy asks for prayers for friends and relatives of Marie Littlefair, who passed away Friday. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Howie prays for um, Marie. He gives thanks uh, and prays that she is now with God. Loving God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kathy and Vinny ask for prayers of comfort for Nickerson Rosa families on the passing of Sister Carol. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guy asks for prayers for Anna Hans, prayer for gainful employment, peace, and happiness. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Linda asks for prayers for our military and their families, for their safety and comfort in their time of loss. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Anna asks for prayers for Patricia Lin Linard on the loss of husband Alan and for co-worker Debbie, uh, her daughter and father in the hospital with COVID. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And John asks for prayers for, for my family and myself. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer requests from the Zoom chat Debbie prays for those in the path of a hurricane Ida, the governor of Louisiana has said it is the strongest storm to hit the state since 1850s. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Karen prayed comfort and healing for Sal, Lee, and Nora as they battle their illness. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Margaret prays, continue to pray for those in Haiti and Afghanistan. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our hear. prayer. We pray prayer for thanks for the safe return of training ship Empire State where my son worked, and all the staff and students. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Bruce lifted prayers for my cousin, Noreen, who was admitted to the hospital last Friday. Loving God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, the names on our prayer list is getting, there's many people getting getting raised. So Lord, Lord, just hear our prayer and answer your time. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. generous acts of giving as with a perfect gift is from above so friends let us offer our gifts to god with joy and thanksgiving please rise
let us pray. God of light and beauty, every gift is from you. Even our ability to give is a blessing of your love. We offer you what we have and what we are. Use our gifts to give birth to a world of righteousness where none are in need and where all draw close to your grace. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's my offertory. Um, so uh, today I'm uh, offering the music. It's a very popular gospel music called Just a Closer Walk with Thee. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's a lot of people's favorite. And then online, Bruce and Kathy, I hope you are enjoying this in a jazz setting. Please take a closer walk with my music. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Beautiful. So, um, would you rise and join me singing uh, the closing hymn? Take my life and never let it be. 
redeemed your life now going through the world in peace and love offering ministries of hope and justice go in peace and many the may the peace of christ now be with you now and forever in the name of god father the creator and the son redeemer and the holy spirit amen, amen. 